Welcome back. Jury selection continues in the Delphi murders trial with opening statements expected later this week. This is a case that has been in the national spotlight for years because it was just so shocking and tragic. Joining me is legal expert and attorney Karen Conti with Conti and Dolan. And Karen, we want to D dive a little deeper into this. The jury selection is being conducted in Fort Wayne. That's about two hours away from Delphi, where the murders happen. Can you explain why this is important and where will the case ultimately be tried? Well, the defense filed a motion for change of venue, saying this small town of Delphi, which is 3,000 people, was too small and they couldn't get a good jury pool. The judge said, no, we're not going to change venue, but what we are going to do is we're going to pick a jury in Fort Wayne, mm. which has about 270,000 people in the population, and then we're going to bus them to Delphi, sequester them in a hotel, and have them listen to the evidence. And I think that's really a good result for the defense because in a small town like Delphi, with the international attention this case has gotten, it would be very difficult to get a fair jury. But they have been able to get 14 of the 16 needed, right, so far. So given all of the pretrial publicity, doesn't seem that they've had too much trouble getting a full jury. Absolutely. It happened very, very quickly. I was actually surprised. Um, so, you know, either the judge is, is doing a very good job of weeding people out or people really want to serve on this jury. Um, it, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how that works with shipping them in and sequestering them for the long period of time. Um, I was reading more about this case yesterday and kind of the, uh, the roles that the defense and the prosecution are going to play here. And both of them are going to say, look, Richard Allen, the suspect in this case, has said that he committed these murders. Um, and the defense is going to go with this, but he's going to say, but what he told inmates and his wife is much different than what actually happened, the evidence that we've collected. Can you explain that? Well, apparently, according to media reports, Alan, since he's been incarcerated, has said over 60 times that he committed these, this crime. And he said it to his family on the phone. He said it to inmates. He said it to guards. And it sounds like anyone who would listen. Now, his defense is saying it's because his mental condition has deteriorated so much that he's just saying things that are completely false. Mm. But it doesn't make sense. I mean, you sometimes hear a jailhouse uh, snitch, but 60 times you confess to the crime. I just find that really very difficult to understand. Yeah, and even more important uh, maybe here is a bullet that was discovered by the girls' bodies. And uh, there, that matched what a gun, right, that Alan had at his home? That was one of the big pieces of evidence. We don't know a lot about this case. In fact, we heard that the crime scene was kind of staged and that there were all kinds of notes and letters that were posted on the trees. And we also heard that the girls were, were sliced with a box cutter. So mm. what was a gun doing there? Did they die by gunshot? Was there sexual assault? We don't know any of those facts as we sit here right now. Also interesting here, there was this theory that the, the murders were conducted by the satanic cult referred to as Odinus. That has been disproved and the judge is saying we don't want any of that in the courtroom. Yes, the judge said, listen, if you come up with evidence that ties this group to this crime, then I'll let it in. But so far, I have seen nothing that would lead anyone to reasonably believe that this group was responsible. So it probably won't get in unless the defense comes up with some evidence otherwise. Mm. Last question for you here, Karen. Does the fact that it took six years to arrest Allen work in his favor? It absolutely does, because as a defense lawyer, the first argument I would make is the police had reasonable doubt for six years. Mm. The prosecutors had reasonable doubt for six years. And now we're positive that he's the one who did this in this tiny town where everybody knows everybody and everybody has seen this picture of him right here walking. I mean, how could he not have been identified earlier? There is reasonable doubt. So we'll see what the evidence is. And if they've kept this really, really quiet. And it's going to be a fascinating case to observe. Yeah, hopefully it provides some closure to those little girls' families. I just can't even imagine what they have been going through for six years, Karen. Thank you for your time this morning. Sure, Natalie. Have a good one.